Concerns raised over 33% of Teddy shares. 24 foreigners awarded PNG citizenship status. 99 million Kina for new Akiru Highway. This is NBC Papua New Guinea National News. Good evening, I'm Antonia Singot. With the government giving 33% of Octedi mine shares to the people of Western Province, there are concerns on how it will be used. A landowner association is spearheading a campaign to encourage all stakeholders in the province to find a solution. The North Ply District Development Authority kick-started the drive, allocating one million kina for the campaign. Maivu Lafanama reports. The announcement by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill recently to allocate 33.3% of Octedi mine shareholding back to the people of Western is history in the making. This is after almost 35 years of mine operations. The Octedi Mine Impacted Areas Association has joined in a chorus of provincial leaders in welcoming the decision. In a media conference in Port Mosby yesterday, the association, led by President Nick Boone, praised the government. The feeling of ownership and the feeling of uh, decision making will make the people accept the government and the government's decision and the operation of the mine. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the uh, Prime Minister for giving this 33 percent to the people of Western Province, including the mine villages. Currently, the beneficiaries are disorganized. A joint effort is needed to bring all stakeholders together for a way forward. These include landowners, mine impacted villages, and the provincial government. With a 1 million kina support from the North Fly District Development Authority, Otmia is starting a campaign throughout the province. We have, we have equities in all these oil and gas. How can we help the community? This is the venue that we are trying to create a structure where communities can understand and say, all right, we follow this structure and we say everything together. We are from Western Province. Your benefit is my benefit. Yours is my benefit. We all share. All those shareholding structures, holding companies, will all be discussed during this awareness and then during the forum. don't want them to, uh, Prime Minister, to entertain any so-called small individual groups. However, called for funding support from relevant government and consent agencies. We also need funding. Apart from awareness, we need to create or we need to come together and uh, organize a development forum. It must be about five to eight million kina to accomplish this process. Since BHP Billiton opened a mine in 1982, reports indicated no real and sustainable benefits were established in the area. The opportunity is now available to the leaders of Western Province to ensure its future is secured after the mine life ends in 2025. Maivo Lafanama, NBC National News, Port Mosby. The PNG government has awarded at least 24 foreigners their citizenship status out of hundreds of applicants. Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Rimbing Pato presented the citizenship certificates to the successful applicants in Port Moresby today. Rose Amos reports. In light of the growing concerns on the influx of illegal foreigners in the country, the Immigration and Citizenship Services has taken upon itself to properly recognize foreigners who wish to become Papua New Guinea citizens. In a ceremony today, citizenship certificates were awarded. According to the Chief Immigration Officer, Matayo Rabura, their applications has gone through proper vetting process. The Citizenship Assessment Committee, which is made up of two parliamentarians, the Chief Immigration Officer and others, have thoroughly screened the applications. The process is uh, people who desire to acquire PNG citizenship by naturalization uh, submit applications to the Citizenship Advisory Committee, which comprises of uh, two politicians, parliamentarians, and the Secretary for Attorney General, Justice, and myself. Uh, we have met uh, on four locations, Port Mosby Lay, Kokopo, and, and Kiunga, and uh, made recommendations to the Minister. And of course, in that process, we look at uh, 
length of residency in PNG, the character, uh, what they are doing in PNG, to make sure they don't become a burden on the country. Rabura says independent body also conducted their background research on each of the applicant before they are being considered. Part of the secretary's job is to seek character clearances from NIO, police, and we look at the other records, financial records that they submit uh, in terms of their financial ability or capability to sustain themselves, check their business enterprises if they have established businesses to make sure they're legit, uh, and of course do some physical uh, inspections by the Secretariat. Recipients are delighted as finally they are PNG citizens. Very excited, very proud to become public. Those who receive these citizenship certificates are mainly Chinese, Sri Lankans, Bangladesh, Filipinos and two from New Zealand. Matayo Rebura says he believed they will be good citizens and contribute meaningfully to the development of PNG. Rose Amos, NBC National News, Port Mosby. Pangu Party leader Sam Basil claims that the government has failed to provide copies of the Alatawa Court for general public viewing. He said this yesterday in Port Moresby. The Alatawa Court is one of the most important policy documents set following the 2012 elections by the current government. Sheila Malkin reports. According to the government, people have seen real change in the country through the commitments contained in the accord. However, Mr. Basil is worried that the policies set out are not being achieved. Nobody has a copy of Alatawa Accord. Even though we asked the government to make a copy available, there is no copy of Alatawa Accord available. And um, the way the government is running this country so far, it must be in a very bad Galatawa Accord. They failed to deliver the 2016 budget. They've corrected it a few weeks ago by passing a supplementary ballot budget, which came in too late. In the meantime, Mr. Basil said the agriculture sector in the country does not have the budgetary support, adding that for this year the budget appropriation was only 7 million kina. In all the agriculture sector, uh, they are suffering because there is no budgetary support and all the agriculture specialists are just sitting down doing nothing. If you look at Arab Station, Arab Station is overgrown by bush, buildings are broken, breaking down, we still have our agriculture research scientists our agriculture workers that are employed under the government payroll, they are sitting there doing nothing. Uh, we support them from Bulolo district by um, funding the animal tethering program. Uh, we put a little bit of money into uh, Arab station, but when you look at nationwide, agriculture is moving backwards. Mr. Basil said agriculture will be one of the key policies for his party. Make sure that the future of Papua New Guinea and our dependence on agriculture must be our priority number one. Sheila Malkin, NBC National News, Port Moresby. Prime Minister Pete O'Neill has vowed to provide direct funding to hospitals around the country. When speaking at the swearing-in ceremony of the Kerima General Hospital Board, the Prime Minister reiterated that this is to ensure funds reach hospitals and meet the needs of patients. He said hospital boards are being properly appointed around the country to carry out this task. Jacqueline Yala with this report. The Prime Minister arrived on a plane at Kerama Airport. He was then led out by traditional dancers. School children lined up at the road as the Prime Minister and his delegates walked towards the new Kerama Hospital. The Prime Minister officially opened the new hospital mass facility. Hundreds of people were there to witness the occasion. In his address, the Prime Minister said Kerama Hospital is a good example of direct funding. That is why when I got into power, we made sure that we resealed the airport. We tried to resealed the township. I'm very disappointed that, that the uh, fully funds that were made available has not been fully spent here. I will find out why. I will find out why. It is not, it's, a, it's not as if the government is not providing the money. Money is provided, provided, but it has been spent either by contractors or people who work for us. It is not my job to go and inspect every project in the country. O'Neill said they have bypassed 
the health department so that hospitals can receive money direct and ensure their needs are met. Doing the simple things probably will make sure that our country continues to progress. In four years we've made a big difference. I know that politics been politics. All the kind can dirty total politics is up here. But I want to simply tell you, don't worry about Wagani politics. We will handle that. We are handling that. You worry about what we can do for each district, each province, each town. The Prime Minister also visited the TB ward at Kerama General Hospital. Jacqueline Yala, NBC National News, Port Mosby. Road construction of one of the country's missing links will soon get underway following a contract signing today. A contract worth 99.4 million kina was awarded to Sivpak Limited for the construction of a 40-kilometer road from Semberiki in the Gulf province to Irave in the Southern Highlands. This project will see the completion of the Agiru Highway, which will link the highlands to the southern region. Gregory Avira reports. The contract signing at the government house today was attended by senior management staff of the contractor Sivpak Limited. Signing on behalf of the state was Secretary for Works, David Were, and was witnessed by Governor-General Sir Michael Ogio. The 99.4 million kina project is set to get underway. We already have the uh, section from uh, Kikori up to Sembari Kidan. This is the remaining bit from Sembari to Tuerave, and then we're connecting the old car of Sotman and Sela Highway now. Secretary Were also confirmed that the highway has been renamed after the late Ella Governor Anderson Agiru. It is uh, Agiru Highway, yes, named after Agiru, huh? because uh, he's, he initiated this uh, road project years back. This will be the second involvement for CIFPEC in constructing the Gulf to Southern Islands Highway, renamed the Agiru Highway. An initial 54-kilometer stretch of this road was completed in 2002 by the same contractor, Gregory Avira, NBC National News, Port Mosby. Violence against children is increasing at an alarming rate in Papua New Guinea. Clin clinical manager for Port Mosby General Hospital's Family Support Center, Tessie Soy, said the number of survivors of gender-based violence and other related violence is increasing every day. The Family Support Centre provides counselling as well as first aid treatment to the victims of different types of violence. Jacqueline Yala reports. Gender-based violence, violence against children and family and sexual violence are common in Papua New Guinea. Seeing this need, the Port Mosby General Hospital under its social work department has established the Family Support Centre. People who were sexually violated were urged to see them quickly in order to prevent all kinds of diseases. And, you know, I'd like to tell um, Papua New Guineans out there that please, if anyone is sexually you know, violated, bring them to the center be, uh, within the 72 hours to prevent HIV, prevent pregnancy, prevent hepatitis B, and prevent tetanus. Those are the four things we can do. Then we continue with the psychological first aid. That's just counseling and trying to tell them that they're not at fault, especially children. The number of children seen each month is high compared to adults. Especially children. And I'll tell you, we have a very high rate of children under the age of 16. Our uh, percentage is about 60, 70 percent per month. Mm -hmm. So that is quite a alarming what for us here at especially NCD, which is mini Papua New Guinea. Rape is another big issue the country is facing. Mothers and girls were also urged to look after themselves in daily basis. The center is also working closely with the police department and other agencies to curb this issue. Jacqueline Yala. NBC National News, Port Mosby. The Internal Revenue Commission has donated more than 1,000 kina worth of children materials to the Family Support Centre. The Family Support Centre is under the Port Mosby General Hospital and deals with gender-based violence and violence against children. Again, Jacqueline Yala reports. 
Gender-based violence, violence against children and family and sexual violence are common in Papua New Guinea. Seeing this need, the Port Mosby General Hospital under its social work department has established the Family Support Center. People who were sexually violated were urged to see them quickly in order to prevent all kinds of diseases. And you know, I'd like to tell um, Papua New Guineans out there that please, if anyone is sexually you know, violated, bring them to the center be, uh, within the 72 hours to prevent HIV, prevent pregnancy, prevent hepatitis B, and prevent tetanus. Those are the four things we can do. Then we continue with the psychological first aid. That's just counseling and trying to tell them that they're not at fault, especially children. The number of children seen each month is high compared to adults. Especially children, and I'll tell you we have a very high rate of children under the age of 16. Our percentage is about 60, 70 percent per month. So that is quite a alarming what for us here at especially NCD, which is mini Papua New Guinea. Rape is another big issue the country is facing. Mothers and girls were also urged to look after themselves in daily basis. The center is also working closely with the police department and other agencies to curb this issue. Jacqueline Yala, NBC National News, Port Mosby. After almost 20 years of negotiations with Water PNG for payment of water bores operating on their land, Two clans from the Palnacote Ward in East New Britain province have settled with an offer given to them by the provincial administration. The payment is for three water bores installed at the Vunabosco area in Kokopo district, which supplies water to residents and business houses in Kokopo town. Mapun Pidian reports from Kokopo. Following the first payment in 2014 of 36,000 kina, the balance of 427,100 kina will now be met by the East New Britain Provincial Administration and the Kokopo City Commission. Kokopo Town Mayor Diovia Kopan says documents such as agreements and MOUs have to be done up before the balance of payment can be made to the landowners. We have now finally come to the end of this issue. It was a 17 years long overdue issue. And we are grateful that what the PNG has now finally uh, agreed to come and have the meeting with us. Uh, this issue, when I took it up with the landowners of Palakaur, where Oleonim land, where the bore was drilled, uh, with that issue, in the 17 years, they've been negotiating it privately, all yet one time with the PNG. Until in 2016, this year, the beginning of this year, we took them aboard. Because Palnakaur Award is one of our awards that is within the uh, all areas of Kokopo, and local areas. It's one of our 20 awards that me, me play look out to. CEO of the Kokopo City Commission Board, John Talele, says the landowners have agreed not to cause any disruption to water supply as they reached a compromise yesterday afternoon following a meeting with Water PNG management. The provincial administration also stressed that the ownership of the land must be sorted out carefully before the component of the provincial administration is given to them. To when the provincial administration will, uh, will sort that out, the counterpart funding, deputy PA uh, on behalf of the provincial administration has assured uh, the landowners that uh, that will be taken on on board uh, uh, on our next year's budget. Mr. Talele says that once the final installment is made, the Lands Division will facilitate the land title to come under state ownership. Mapun Pidian, NBC National News, Kokopo. Overseas, Syrian rebel groups have accused the government of dropping chlorine bombs on civilians in Aleppo. The government has denied previous accusations of chemical weapons used during the five-year-old civil war. But in August, a UN-led report found it used chlorine on at least two other occasions. And a warning, this report contains some distressing images. Rescue workers moved in as dust from the attack still hung in the air. Residents reported a strong smell of chlorine. Up to 80 people, they say, had suffocated, though no one was killed. 
Dozens were rushed to hospital, struggling to breathe. Children were among those worst affected, their small lungs least able to withstand the poison. Without oxygen masks, many would die. Others were washed down with water to remove all trace of the lethal gas. He smells of chlorine. Everything smells of chlorine. Rebel groups say Syrian government helicopters dropped the chlorine in barrel bombs over the Sukari neighbourhood in Aleppo's rebel-held east. It's the third such attack in just over a month and coincides with a UN inquiry. We are also now investigating new allegations of chemical weapons use, uh, particularly pertaining to August incident. The Syrian government has repeatedly denied using chlorine gas and says rebel forces are just as guilty of using chemical weapons. The use of chlorine only adds to the worsening warfare in Aleppo. Fighting has escalated over the summer, with both sides desperate to control Syria's largest city. But weeks on, neither side has managed to claim victory. We now look at the weather preview with Douglas. Thanks, Antonia. Good evening, everybody. A quick look at the weather. Scattered isolated showers in the southern Momase and the Highlands regions. Fine in certain centres of New Guinea Islands, although some areas to experience scattered rain and thunderstorms. As usual, I've got all the details towards the end of the bulletin. Antonia, it's back to you. Thank you, Douglas. Coming up after the break, settlers living in the Morata Ridge settlement in Port Moresby are crying foul over an eviction notice issued by police. And with only nine days remaining, the streets of Port Moresby have lit up with the sale of independence items by street vendors. Stay with us on NBC National News.